understand that you're invested in like a lot of different like things. Do you believe in like saving money at all, or do you think that it's better to have all your money invested at all times? So the only reason I was able to, what was your name, brother? Uh, Jacob. Jacob, so check this out. This right here, do you see it? Yeah. So that's Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr stock. Those were the first three companies I invested in. So I got much worse at investing after I started. Um, What's crazy about this, brother, was from 22 to 34, I worked for my dad's liquor store, and he never really paid me a lot of money because it was like immigrant family business life. So I never got paid a lot of money, but I was saving money like crazy. Like I was making 50,000 a year and I was saving 10,000 a year because I didn't buy shit. I was just working and saving. And all those savings is what let me invest into this. So I think it's, it's a mix. I invest a lot. Smart people realize that are financially savvy realize investing is a good way to go versus just savings. But I always have a nest egg. I think you gotta find your own balance. You have to have a rainy day fund just in case things go poorly. And I think one of the biggest issues in the world right now for 20 to 30 year olds is they don't save. They buy a lot of dumb shit. You know, and so everyone's buying dumb shit to look cool on social media and then when a rainy day happens, they're panicking. And so I think you gotta find your balance, bro. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. I'm curious, do you think uh, the future of blockchain technology is and how can a high school student like me get involved and try and make money off of it? What's your name, man? No. No, yeah, I think blockchain's massive, especially with AI coming. Does everybody here, raise your hand if you know what I'm about to say. By show of hands, how many of you know what deep fake videos are? Right, so look, like probably about half the class and you guys are youngsters. So one of the craziest things that's brewing is deep fake videos. Like, as soon as we hang up here during class, like Google it, if you guys are allowed to have your phone on you, you have to like really know this. There's gonna be an incredible need, Noah, for the blockchain, because we're gonna need to know proof of providence, because in about three years, everybody in here will know what deep fakes are, and like, it's the biggest thing that's brewing in the world, which is, you can make videos now of people talking that they didn't really actually say it. It's all AI generated. Oh, most of you should have heard about the Drake and Weekend song that was made, right? By show of hands, how many people know about the fake Drake? There we go. So that's where this shit's going. It's gonna come to video. So like literally there's gonna be videos on me on TikTok in a year saying shit that I didn't actually say. And that's gonna throw the world into a spin and I think the blockchain's gonna be a huge factor in proving that. So of course, as you know, Noah, there was the chaos of last year's NFT spring, but that was a lot of speculation. That's not the place to quote unquote look to make money. Getting educated on AI and getting educated on blockchain technology and then seeing what's interesting to you and becoming good at it, that's the big opportunity for you. Is it better to invest in blockchain or invest in like the stock market? Like which is better? Definitely the stock market if you're talking about NFTs right now because there's so much speculation in cryptocurrencies and NFTs. 99% of them are gonna go to zero. So now there'll be some incredible opportunities in that 1% but the amount of time and effort that someone has to put into being educated there. The number one thing for everybody here who's thinking about investing, even a small amount of money, invest in something you know. Like even if it's a brand, like one of the best pieces of advice that I think you can still screw up but is universally strong is for especially kids or people in their early 20s, invest in a brand and a business that you actually love. Right, like there was a lot of kids that did really well with like Lululemon and did really well with like Netflix and Tesla over the last decade because they knew it, they understood it. And so the number one, you know, whether it's blockchain, whether it's the stock market, whether it's real estate, whether it's art, whether it's collectibles like sneakers and sports cards, all of you should remember, this is the stuff I wish I got taught in school when I was growing up. Invest in stuff you know. So many people are just investing in a cryptocurrency or an NFT because they heard someone else say it. That's silly. Invest in things you know. Hi. <laughs> um, I was wondering, like, with all the new VR stuff, how like it's becoming the new world, how do you think that's gonna affect social media and influencers today? It's a good question. I think that VR is inevitable. Like, especially for people that are as young as you, like, you guys are gonna live in a VR world. It might take another 15 years for it to get to like real scale. 
but it's gonna affect everything. If, you know, think about how much this affected the world. And this is like the halfway point between real life and virtual. I think there'll be all new influencers because of it, but even more importantly, like when all of you are 40 and 35, you may be sitting in VR for five, six, seven, eight hours a day. And that is very clear to me as a possibility in two decades. So it's gonna change everything. It's gonna change the way people travel. It's gonna change where people live. You're gonna be able to live anywhere you want because meetings are not just gonna be on Zoom like this anymore. It's gonna feel like you're actually there. So when, why do you even have to be there? It's gonna change absolutely everything. It's gonna change the landscape of influencers, businesses, politics, society, dating, and everything else you can think of. Thank you. You're welcome. So, like, you put yourself out there in the world, you post on social media, but like tons of people, like every single one of our parents, like they work, they all have businesses, but like they don't promote themselves, put themselves out there as much. Do you believe it's like beneficial and like people are like dumb for not doing that? Or what is your take on like how- It's a good question. Brother, I, th- I think it's a, it's a great question. I think it's a self-awareness game similar to what I said earlier. I don't think it's dumb not to. If you're not capable and you don't want to and you want to be overly private and you're introverted and you don't want to deal with, you know, it's all fun and games that I put myself out there but there's a lot of baggage that comes along with it, right? I'm sh- you know, people say nasty things, people get into your business, privacy. So, no, I think it's a personal thing. Do I think it's beneficial? If you're good, it is. You know, like, if I was not right about a lot of stuff, it wouldn't be good. You know, like, you have to be good. Uh, So I think it's a personal journey. I don't think it's a requirement, but I do think it's an opportunity. And I think for a lot of people that do enjoy, you know, you know, I didn't realize until I started doing what I'm doing how much I would have loved being a teacher. Like, you're a great teacher here. I didn't even know that. But I've learned it through this journey of how much I enjoy it. And so, you know, I think, if someone's willing to go there, it can lead to a lot of great things. I didn't know that I would love public speaking. I was 34 years old the first time I gave a public speech. Didn't even cross my mind that I, I think I got, as a matter of fact, here's some good fun school stuff. I don't know if I can find it. Where's my report card? Um, I got a D in speech in high school. Right? So like, there was no indication that I was gonna be good at it. Um, and now I love it and so, yeah, I think, I think it's worth putting yourself out there if, you're, if you have a good understanding that it works for you. But for a lot of people in this classroom and your parents, too introverted, too not interested in dealing with getting made fun of or getting talked crappy to and don't wanna be bothered in public. And I think that's absolutely right for certain people. And so you just gotta find your own way. Content creators need to focus on what's free, right? Because I also thought that long form was gonna do well when I saw how streaming was playing out. Many people in this room know that they've watched five straight episodes of something on Netflix or Hulu, right? And so like, long form's doing great. Like, I watched all of Wednesday, Adams in like one evening, you know? And so I think that creators need to focus on the platforms that are free. It's not easy to get on Netflix or Hulu, right? Meanwhile, you can make TikToks and nobody can stop you and you can become anybody, right? And so I think that long and short form will continue to grow. There'll be new platforms. There'll be decentralized social networks built on the blockchain. There'll be new platforms just like TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram have come in the last decade. There'll be more and there'll be more long forms. There'll be more and more streaming. There's something called fast channels. Um, So I think There's a lot brewing in media, and I think for everyone here, it's about self-awareness of like what medium works for you, including some people in here are great writers and don't wanna be on camera, and there's opportunities to transcribe that writing into voice-activated pieces of content, so the world is wide open. Every kid in this class has an unbelievable opportunity if they have self-awareness of how they best create and if they have understanding of the free platforms and how to get the most awareness, and then ultimately talent.